Aloha, this is the G'day Sally Show and I'm Sally Squires, entertaining the world. So tonight I'm going to read another story from my book, Footsteps to Fairy Forest. We're nearly getting to the end because this is footstep 21 and there's only 26 footsteps all together. So footstep 21. When I got home last night, Grandma had a surprise for me. She had been cleaning out her attic and she had found an old telescope. She said she thought it had belonged to her grandfather, who was a sea captain. So as soon as it got dark, she set it up out in the backyard, and we took turns looking through it at all the twinkly stars. It was such fun. I think I'll be an astronomer when I grow up. So now I will be looking for fairies during the day and looking at the stars at night. What a wonderful life I have. I am so lucky. Today I'm heading east with my head still full of stars. I have to be on the lookout for three spider orchids. I love the way spider orchids really look like daddy long legs spiders with their long petals that look just like spider legs. But I am worried that I might miss them as there are usually a lot of flowers on the paths I've been taking. I wonder if I might get a visit from another animal and I'm trying to keep an eye out for one as I watch the path for the orchids. Once I thought I had found the spider orchids and I raced up to where I thought was them but surprisingly it was a real spider and several baby spiders inching their way along the path. I knew I shouldn't disturb them or get in their way in case they bite me and I know so many spiders are poisonous so I move very carefully around them. There were lots of birds in the trees along the path and many of them were singing as I walked. I hadn't gone far when I looked back to see if the spiders were still inching along and I saw a bird fly down and eat one of the babies. Oh. I was really upset. I think it was a crow, but all I saw was a flash of feathers and it was gone. I turned away quickly in case I would see other birds eating the spiders, and then I noticed a furry object ahead. When I reached it, I could see that it was a baby wombat. I wondered where its mother was, but I guess she called to it because it took one look at me and shambled off into the bush. Then I came across something that I had never seen in all my walks to meet with the fairies. It was an old rusty car and it was right across my path. I guess it had broken down years ago and it had just sat there getting rustier and rustier. I figured that I was going to have to climb over it. So I reached up and put my bucket and spade on its roof. Then I climbed up on the bumper bar onto the bonnet and then onto the roof. I picked up my bucket and spade and dropped them over the other side. Then I clambered down over the back of the car and jumped onto the ground. I wonder who could have just left it there and not ever come back for it. I wonder if it will still be there when I'm old enough to drive. After I'd gone a little bit further, I began to wonder if I should have looked underneath it because maybe my three spider orchids were there. Should I go back? I decided to keep walking for a while and see if they were ahead of me. And that was a good decision because before long, there they were. They weren't lying on the path, they were growing right out in the middle of it. I didn't want to disturb them and interfere with their growing, so I carefully dug around them until I hit something hard. Then I smoothed away the dirt with my fingers, and soon I found the stone marked footstep 21. I tried to brush all the dirt off my fingers by rubbing them with some grass and leaves, but they were still dirty, so I held the stone in the palm of my hand and waited for the next fairy to land on it. It wasn't long before I saw a purple and brown flash, and yes, you know what comes next. The next minute, a purple and brown fairy landed on the stone in my palm. I liked her hair. It was all purple and spiky. I wonder if Grandma would let me have my hair cut like that. The fairy said that she was Alta Rasta and that she was the fairy of the outer world. And then I fell asleep. So now we're going to hear about the fairy Alta Rasta. And Alta Rasta is the fairy of the outer world. Alta Rasta was perched on top of the highest tree on the highest hill in Fairy Forest. She was looking through her fairy telescope, checking to see that everything in the heavens was not only in the right place, but was behaving as it should. As she checked out every corner of the sky and consulted her heavenly outward, outer world map, the fairy could see that there was a bright star which was not registered on her map. She had never seen this star before, and she knew that it should not be there. She decided to talk to Stamper Lester, the fairy of the stars, to see if she knew anything about this new star. Alta Rasta flew off with her outer world map, 
to find Stamper Lester who was also checking the heavens, looking to see that all the stars were rotating exactly as they should. The two fairies laid out their maps on the starshine mushroom, which they had often used as a table on which to place their maps. Putting the maps side by side, they could both see that the new star was not on either map. Stamper Lester took out her telescope and dialed up the highest magnification for starlight. Carefully she scanned the sky where the new star had appeared. Finally she turned to Alterasta and shook her head. No, dear Alterasta, this is not a new star. Why, it is not a star at all. Thanking Stamper Lester for her wise words, Alterasta returned to the highest tree on the highest hill in Fairy Forest. She scanned the heavens again using her fairy telescope. Hmm, she said to herself. Stamper Lester is right. That heavenly body is not a star. Now I can see that it has a tail. So it cannot be a star, it must be a comet. And this is a new comet which we have never seen before. Now what Alterasta was worried about was that this new comet might, just might be heading straight towards Fairy Forest. And it was travelling so fast that if it landed in Fairy Forest, it would make a huge hole. And many creatures might fall into that huge hole. So Alterasta knew that it was her job to track this rogue comet and work out exactly where it was heading. And if it was heading for Fairy Forest, then she would have to create a fairy spell full of such strong magic that it would do no harm. She would have liked to have been able to fly right up into the heavens and check out the rogue comet herself. But she knew that not even fairies could fly so high or so fast. There would have to be another way that she could find out how fast the rogue comet was coming towards Fairy Forest and exactly where it would land. Alterasa reached into the secret pocket in her shoe. She took out the strongest magic fairy dust that she had. She waved her magic fairy wand, which was made out of space gas, over her own eyes and she said her spell. Unicorn, universe unusual, strongest seeing sight, save souls from sky stranger, magnify magic marvels. And she carefully sprinkled the magic fairy dust in her eyes so that they would be able to see more clearly the rogue comet. When she opened her eyes and looked through her telescope again, it was just like magic. Well, of course it was. She had made the strongest magic spell that she could. Ultra Rasta could see the rogue comet as if she was right up next to it. She could tell that it was coming fast, very fast. And what is more, Ultra Rasta could see that the rogue comet was not alone. Oh no, much to her surprise, she could see that riding on top of the comet was a nasty nymph who was chuckling and chuckling as the ferocious space winds blew the hair of the nasty nymph. Now, although Ultra Rasta knew that she couldn't fly up to the rogue comet to stop it, she knew that her fairy magic was strong enough to stop both the comet and the nasty nymph. Fixing her gaze on the comet as it rushed towards her, she waved her magic fairy wand and said her spell. Unicorn universe unusual, rogue comet stopped, nasty nymph nuked, fairy forest safe forever. And just to make sure that all was now well again, Ultra Rasta got out her telescope and checked to see whether the rogue comet and the nasty nymph were still coming towards her. As she checked all over the heavens, she could see that both the rogue comet and the nasty nymph were gone forever. Hooray! So that is the story of Alterasta, the fairy of the outer world. You know, Hawaii is a microcosm of the world with people here from all over the world. And Noa Noa Hawaii is a microcosm of the traditional arts of the world with beautiful patterns from many countries. They've been in business for more than 40 years with wonderful Hawaii designed batik clothing. Their hand dyed and handmade clothes have patterns that are based on traditional kapa and tapa designs from Hawaii, Polynesia, Micronesia, Indonesia, even New Zealand and Africa. So check out the wonderful items that Noa Noa has on their website www.noanoahawaii.com